All right, everybody, how's it going? Welcome to another episode of Cyclone Fight Club. We are officially in week four of the first season here on Fire Pro Wrestling World. Cyclone Fight Club has started, and once again, we are three weeks in, and we can take a quick look at the standings here and see how we've gone so far. As you can see, Xavier Woods, Tomohiro Ishii, and Akira Tozawa all at 3-0 currently, uh, the only undefeated guys thus far. And then we have Omega, Luke Harper, and Pete Dunne all at 2-1 still pretty good the uh, uh, an easy win here today uh can help definitely keep them on the right track we have a whole host of people at one and two currently uh shingo samoa joe matt riddle matt hardy jervis candace takashi yoshida and sasha banks and bray wyatt all at one and two and the only person yet to have actually getting a win uh in cyclone fight club thus far is flamita he is still winless at O and three and we can of course take a quick look here at this week's schedule we'll take a look at that right here and uh we'll see the order and how this goes we'll start off of course with shingo takagi versus uh flamita as he attempts to get his first win tonight once again O and three this season Looking for that first win. We have Pete Dunn versus Takashi Yoshida, Jervis Cottonbelly, and Luke Harper. And uh, a match that would probably be a dream match anywhere else. Uh, here it's just a normal weekly match. It's still pretty much a dream match, I'd say, with Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy. And then, of course, a battle of Canadians, Candice LeRae and Kenny Omega. And a match of Did They? It's Xavier Woods versus Sasha Banks. And, of course, another match between two complete ass kickers. And we will see a more legit one in Matt Riddle as he faces the undefeated Akira Tozawa. And in tonight's main event, it is beef versus beef. As the undefeated Tomohiro Ishii will have yet another big test in front of him as he takes on Samoa Joe in tonight's main event. And we will just immediately start getting moved on here uh, to Fire Pro World here. I'll have to kind of get this all set up. I, I kind of had it set up uh, uh, not too long ago, but we will get this here. So um, I didn't really get around to getting everybody in here. Let me see here. So we are starting off, of course. Oh boy, this is gonna be a this is gonna be interesting to try to load this up. One second here. Man, it's really like it's it's really taking its time here. It's not what I really like to see. <laughs> see what we can get here. Oh my god. Alright, let's hope for the best when it comes to loading these up. I probably should have done this originally. I hate that it, it that it kinda does this. To start off, to just load everything up like this and Oh boy, here we go. Just about there. Hang on. Thank God there's only 16 of them, huh? There we go. Alright, so we start off tonight with our very first match of the evening. Shingo Takagi. Hang on one second here. And he will be taking on... Oh man, I went the wrong way. And he will be taking on Flamita. And we will get a quick tail of the tape here before their uh, match here. One second as we get to pull that up. Here we go. The quick tail of the tape between the two here. Uh, of course, Shingo with a win. One and two here. Tied for seventh. Flamita, the only one who actually isn't tied for any position. He's the only one now. Uh, completely winless at 0-3. Dead last is 16th. He is, of course, 12 years younger than Shingo. Uh, of course, he also is 3 inches shorter and about 44 pounds lighter. And uh, both members of Dragon Gate, so these two are fairly familiar with one another, and we will see uh, what we can 
get out of them, and we'll see if Flamita can get his first win notched tonight. Right, it will take a second to... Or it'll take even longer to load. Well, let's see. It should be it should be able to load. <laughs> Already not the best start. There we go. And here we go. The opening contest in CFC Week 4. Takagi versus Flamita. Immediately a nice takeover. And Shingo looking to reverse just about everything. Oh, backslide by Flamita gets nothing. Back chop doesn't do anything. Gods up off the ropes. Drop down. And puts him right over his knee here. Once again, dropping the knee right in the back of Flamita's head. Flamita coming back, though, with a ba with a uh, body slam. Putting the knees into the gut there. Both of them pacing one another. There's a double axe handle. Another huge knee by Shingo to Flamita. And now reversing a suplex of his own. And suplexes him clean out of the ring. Little Nate, of course, the referee for this contest. They get to the count of five, and now a body slam clean out of the ring, and Shingo comes right back in at the count of one, not waiting any time whatsoever. And once again, another big suplex in Flamina going clean out of the ring, and he seems to be getting the worst of it right now when it comes to these when it comes to these moves to get thrown clean out of the ring with that. We'll see what he's got. Ooh! Big punch there by Shingo. Seems to be blocking just about anything he can throw at him. Very simplistic stuff that Flamina is able to do here. Not anything big thus far. Every time he tries to go for some sort of suplex, it always gets reversed. Oh, basement dropkick. Or, I'm sorry, sitting dropkick. Let's see here. Big body slam, and now he goes out of the ring. And comes into the ring at barely two. Drop down to Flamita. Let's see what he's got. Oh, into a huge pop-up powerbomb. By Shingo Takagi. And Flamita coming back with a suplex of his own. And now here we go. A strike battle between the two. And Flamita getting the better end of it to Shingo. Bouncing off the ropes looking for another sitting drop kick. And now a roll up here and only gets a one count on Shingo. Picks him up and that time he lands a good suplex. Right here at the five minute mark. We are five minutes into this one. Shingo coming back with a huge powerbomb of his own. Gets it with a roll-up and a solid two-count. Nothing there, doing there for Shingo. Flamita once again with another big vertical suplex. And now a standing shooting star press. Not able to get anything. Oh, Death Valley driver by Shingo Takagi. Let's see. Big elbow strikes by Flamita. And will that be able to do it? And a two-count there on Shingo Takagi. Oh, playing a little bit of possum there is Flamita only able to get a one-count on Takagi. And there's the basement drop kick by Flamita, kicking him right in the back of the head. And another Death Valley driver by Shingo gets him right back up, lands a solid punch right to the dome, and then a double axe handle to the back of Flamita's head. Landing an elbow right into him, let's see, and only able to get a one count after that. Missing a somersault. Oh, nice Enzigiri by Flamita, but Takaki able to come back and fight back out of it. He beats him to his feet, picks him up, and let's see what he's got. Oh, Flamita looks like he was going to try to do something, but Shingo takes advantage of that. Solid punch taking down Flamita. Oh, my God, a huge tackle by Shingo Tagagi. But now Flamita getting it back off the ropes. Wow! Standing C4 by Flamita. It's impressive that he was able to land that, but another Death Valley driver. And, oh, able once again, let's see what he's got. Toss him out of the ring. And he's going to follow him out and throw him back in. He's not even going to let him get an opportunity to come back in on his own. Big body slam by Shingo. Let's see what he's got here. Looking for a backdrop reversed by Flamita. Seems to be motioning for something. Let's see what he's got. Throwing him off the ropes. Nothing going there. And there you go. Standing Frankensteiner didn't get anything out of it. And a back heel kick there. Or a spinning back kick. Not able to get anything now. Bouncing him off the ropes. And Flamita with another standing C4. And both men are down here as it seemed to have taken a toll out of him as we are now 10 minutes in. He's going to do it again. Oh, no. This time he's going to hit him with a big drop kick. And we got Flamita. And there you go. Standing Frankenstein into a pin and a two and three. And Flamita has finally gotten his very first win in CFC. Flamita with a big win over 
Shingo Takagi. And a big congratulations there. He will go up finally to 1-3. and three. And Takagi, of course, taking the losses now right on the same level. And uh, that is the first matchup here. And we will move right in to match number two of this week. And that is the bruiserweight, Pete Dunne. And he will be taking on none other than Takashi Yoshida. Referee for this contest will be giving it to Mario, Mario Yamazaki. And uh, we will get a quick tail of the tape here between Dunne and Yoshida. As you see here, uh, done two and one, tied for fourth uh, currently in the league. Uh, not a lot of people who have actually acclaimed two wins thus far, and he's done fairly well for himself in that regard. And uh, then he also taking on Takashi Yoshida, who is one and two, tied for seventh. I would say there are nine people currently tied for seventh. And as you can see, Pete Dunne. 12 years younger than him. They are both the same height, of course, though. Takashi Yoshida has a uh, much larger frame, holding 264 pounds to Pete Dunn's 205. It is England versus Japan right here in week number four of CFC. Let's go. And bell ringing here. Yoshida immediately going for a tackle. Missed. Dunn tried to come up with a nice counter, wasn't able to do it. Going for a pin early, not able to get anything against him. See what he's got. Oh, nice counter punch by Yoshida. Test of strength here. Weirdly enough, Pete Dunn able to get the test of strength, and he tried to pick him up for what looked like maybe a pile driver or a power bomb. Who knows, but it was reversed by Yoshida. Bounce off the ropes, not doing anything there. Yoshida now with a clubbing blow to the back and a big punch. And now he's got him up in a huge gorilla press and slams him down. Stopping him on the gut now. Pete Dunn looking for some dirty tactics to see if he can beat Takashi Yoshida that way. Nice eye rake. Oh, huge uppercut chop there. Oh, a nice overhand slap by Pete Dunn. Followed by, oh man, a nice STF by Yoshida, but Pete Dunn able to fight out of it. Done with the clubbing blow to the back, but Yoshida able to fight back out of it. Let's see if he can take some sort of advantage. No, as Pete Dunn grabs him in a huge uppercut there. And now Pete Dunn. Oh, Tiger Driver. Not able to, or, uh, I'm sorry, double underhook at Tiger Suplex. <laughs> and uh, dragging him slightly away to the corner there. He's going to start hitting him with the punches and broken up there. Both men off the ropes. Running his body into there is Yoshida. Let's see what he's got here. Oh, nice roll-up by Pete Dunn, but a little too close to the ropes. Gorilla press. Nice gorilla press slam by Yoshida. Throwing his body into him once again. And now Pete Dunn. And now they're going to have overhead strike battles. Dunn and Yoshida with the strike battle. And Yoshida getting the better of him, nearly collapsing himself there. Able to pick himself back up. Dunn, oh, once again looking for something. I think he forgets that Yoshida has a good 60 pounds on him, but he does not care. He's going to at least attempt to do this. Throws him off the ropes. Not able to get anything there. It looked like maybe he was going for something. Not able to make it happen, though. Once again, off the ropes, and that time he's able to get a nice double stomp on him. And a solid kick to Yoshida. Yoshida, this time, throwing him off the ropes and not able to do anything. And now Dunn seems to be tired. He's been running the ropes quite a bit thus far. And uh, let's see if he can do anything. Oh, nice takedown there. Doesn't seem to be, uh, just seems to be using the time to try to get his wind back. He seemed to have lost a lot of it with all the running of the ropes. And Yoshi got to take advantage of the huge jackknife, but too close to the ropes to be able to get a successful pin there. Pete Dunn picking him up, goes go behind, not able to get anything. Yoshi coming back with a huge clothesline. Two, one, two big bear paw punches. And Pete Dunn's going to come back with an eye rake and a second eye rake of his own. Arm twist, working on the shoulder butts there. And a third eye rake. Let's see what he's got, throwing Yoshida up against the turnbuckle. Dunn's looking for something. Oh, big knee strikes. 
to Yoshida, and he seems to be trying to get his win back here. We're just about eight minutes in, and he seems to be a little bit tired, but I think it's because he's been much more active. Wow, big suplex there. Nice back suplex, but Yoshida's going to get one of his own. Oh, nice jack hit by Yoshida. That's one, two, and a 2.9. Nearly able to put Pete Dunn away. That would have been quite impressive if he was able to put Pete Dunn away in under 10 minutes. Not going to make anything happen. A nice reversal into a bridge. Not able to get the two count there. Pete Dunn this time. Big tombstone. And this time he's got a big leg lock on him here in the middle of the ring. And he's able to fight out of it before he has to tap out. And now he's got him up and running power bomb there. Once again, too close to the ropes. He ran pretty much right into the corner. And that may have cost him as Pete Dunn's going to come back with knees and a huge clothesline there. Got him up. Oh, nice ends Gary. Let's see if Dunn can make it happen. Oh, no. Michinoku driver by Yoshida. Picking him up here. But now, oh, Tiger Bomb. Not able to, not able to get anything there. And Yoshida coming back now. Nice overhead. Overhead chop and running off the ropes. Let's see what he's got. Big clothesline. Picking up Pete Dunn. Two more huge punches. But Pete Dunn coming back immediately off the ropes. And now that time... It looked like that's who he was going for earlier and able to hit a big DDT and get a little bit of his win back. Big backbreaker by Pete Dunn, dragging him a little bit away from the ropes, but he kind of hit him more over towards the other corner of the ropes. Looking for something but those big bear paws of Takashi Yoshida coming into play once again. Pete Dunn's really going to have to work to make this happen. Went for a big clothesline of his own, not able to hit it. Yoshida... Looking for something reversed into a bridge. Too close to the ropes, though. And, oh, I don't know if he's too close to the ropes. No, he's not able to. And at 2.9 on the Tiger Bomb, not able to get anything, though. And a big clothesline by Yoshida, and he's going to have to start getting himself together here. He's going to have to work on it. And a uh, running Liger Bomb. He's away from the ropes. There's two and three. And Takashi Yoshida with a big Cyber Bomb there able to get the win over Pete Dunn and he's going to even himself out at 2 and 2. Pete Dunn going to drop to 2 and 2. Absolutely outstanding between Dunn and Yoshida. Yoshida looked like he was in desperation mode, was able to hit the cyber bomb and get the hell out of there before anything too bad could come to him and force the loss. And we move on to our third match of the night this week. Jervis Cottonbelly, the next one. And, of course, he will be facing Luke Harper. And uh, referee for this contest changing over, and it will be Fairbear. <laughs> and this will be the first time, I believe, we are going to get to see Fairbear uh, refereeing these contests. And uh, we will get ourselves a nice tail of the tape here. One second. Da, 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 da. There we go. We will get the tail of the tape up here. As you can see, uh, Jervis Cottonbelly 1 and 2. Luke Harper doing pretty well at 2 and 1. Not much is known about uh, Jervis Cottonbelly other than what he is able to give us. Therefore, he is uh, 90, almost 90 years Luke Harper's elder. But uh, either way, still very close between these two. Luke Harper, though, a very big man. He's got him by about seven inches. Six foot seven, 264. He's got him in both height and weight and assumedly youth. We'll see what happens here between Jervis Cottonbelly and Luke Harper as we get on to our next match here. And the bell rings, and here they go. Here's the nice lockup. Not able to get anything on that one. Jervis picking him up. Ooh, not able to get him out of the ring with that one, but a very nice slam there. Jervis with a nice overhead toss. And, oh, my God. I don't think I've seen Luke Harper pull that one out yet. Able to easily get him in the test of strength as he drags Jervis away from the ropes and is now wrenching on his neck. Not able to get anything, though, as Jervis. Oh, big senton by Jervis. Run him off the ropes. Not able to get it. Luke Harper, though, overpowering him with strikes. Run him off the ropes. Got him into the corner. 
Once again, got him in the corner. Big stomps. And Luke Harper once again working on the neck and head of Jervis Cottonbelly. Jervis fighting back with a knee and then a senton of his own. But, oh, no, Harper just easily tossing him out of the ring. Coming back in at a two count there. Harper got him. Oh, looked like uh, some sort of spine buster slam. And Jervis going to throw him out now. And at the count of one, Luke Harper is back in. And reversing off the ropes. And big back elbow by Luke Harper. Swinging neckbreaker by Jer Jervis Cottonbelly. He's trying to keep this fairly even and keep the heat on Luke Harper. Not able to get anything there between the two. And, oh, Luke Harper running him over and then coming off the ropes with a diving elbow. Nothing there. Uppercut and, oh, boy, both men very well versed in those uppercuts. I haven't quite seen an uppercut battle, but Jervis Cottonbelly surprisingly getting the better end of that. Slams and comes down with a running elbow. And another spine buster slam by Luke Harper. Picks him up. Go behind. Ooh, nice wheelbarrow slam. And working once again on the neck and head. This is this is probably about the most I've seen someone work specifically on a, such a specific part. Big, nice back chops. Very rapid fire ones. Goes to drop the elbow. Harper moves. Discus clothesline by Luke Harper. That may give him a distinct advantage, but Jervis able to come back with a headlock takedown. Let's see what he's got. Elbow to the back, picking Luke Harper up. Turning around. Oh, no, he's got a chokehold to Luke Harper. And nothing doing there. He has been working on that head and neck. Back body drop by Jervis, dropping the elbow. Luke Harper coming around, not able to get anything. Now he tosses him outside the ring. And the ref is going to start to count, and he gets in at the count of three. Harper coming in with a kick, and now a swinging neckbreaker by Jervis Cottonbelly, picking it back up. Straight punch. Harper picks him up. Nice sitting power bomb. Two and oh, only able to get a two count. It was very close, though. I'd say two and a half for Luke Harper. Very impressive. We still haven't even hit the 10 minute mark. Jervis doing what he can to get some submission holds on him. But Luke Harper right now has had the better of him. Running him off the ropes. Bag back body drop. Didn't get out of the ring with that one. But uh, Luke Harper continuing to reverse him. Missing the drop kick. And Jervis is going to take control with a Boston Crab. Fights back out of it. Harper now a bear hug. Maybe trying to, maybe trying to appease the referee there with a nice bear hug. But Harper able to come back up. Taunting the crowd. Big headbutt. See what he's got. Running off the ropes. Not able to get anything. Headlock takeover. And not able to get anything there. Been a story of... Weirdly enough, it's been a story of submissions between these two. Not not was, not was exactly was I expecting some sort of catch-as-catch-can match between Luke Harper and Jervis. Here you go. Series of punches by Jervis Cottonbelly. Board in the top row. Big body splash, but he's too close to the ropes here. Harper. Harper's going to do the same thing with a big splash of his own. Still too close to the ropes. Tosses him out of the ring, and the ref's going to count here. Luke Harper trying to get his win back. And Jervis also trying to get his win back here. Gotten in at the count of five. Harper has got him up. And another sit-down powerbomb. Let's see if that'll be it, too. And 2.9 by Luke Harper, which means Jervis is towards the end of his rope here. Got some big punches in on him, though. Nice headlock takeover. Let's see what he's got. No, too close to the ropes. Whipping him off the ropes. And, ooh, nice back elbow by Jervis. Let's see what he's got against Harper. No, Harper coming back, throwing him up against the ropes. Jervis able to throw him out, and now he's going to follow him out. Oh, but Harper's going to throw him into the crowd and throw him into the barricade. Here we go. Outside of the ring and a big spinning back suplex by Jervis. And we're at a count of 15. And Harper needs to get back in. And he gets back in at the count of 17. I was beginning to think for a second that maybe he had knocked Luke Harper a little bit loopy and that he was going to be counted out. But that was not to be. Oh, nice. Slam there and able to get the three count is Luke Harper. And that absolutely helps his chances. The turning driver by Luke Harper able to get the win there over Jervis Cottonbelly, I believe. 
That will take him officially up to three and one, I believe. Uh, Luke Harper was two and one. He'll go to three and one. Jervis Cottonbelly will drop down to Flamita and Shingo, t and uh, Shingo's territory at one and three. Uh, Takashi Yoshida is also joining him down there, but Luke Harper gets to break away from the pack a little bit, as we're seeing a, a couple of one and two guys kind of uh, dropping, not really able to get that two and two. So we're seeing. Uh, a little bit of separation here. And uh, give me one second here as I'm just going to try to get a drink of water. There we go. Apologies for that. All right. We are at our fourth match of the night. And it is... Before we get to the halfway point, fourth match of the night, it is a big match. A match that I think a lot of people would love to see in real life, and that is Bray Wyatt. Let's see, we will give him uh, this one here. Yeah, zero people. I think it's because I started, I think it's because I started this pretty much right at the same time NL did. Did, started their streaming, so I think I got a lot of people who would be here, oh, maybe over there. Or maybe it's because I started later than I usually do. That might be another thing as well. Little Nate coming back for uh, this for this contest here is one second. As I get a hold of this here. And let's get the tail of the tape between these two men. Of course, both men, one and two, tied for seventh. One of these two men will at least get two and two. One of them will drop to one and three in the lower end of the standings here. Uh, Bray Wyatt, younger than Matt Hardy by 12 years. He also has him by a couple of inches as well as 66 pounds. And uh, Bray Wyatt has been doing pretty well thus far, and I think he's got a, had a lot of very tough competition uh, thus far uh, that he has lost to. So we'll see if Matt Hardy is considered part of that as well, or if he is going to continue his winning ways. Um, of course, he lost last week, and uh, Bray Wyatt looking to continue his winning streak thus far. And we'll see between these two which one of these men will move up and which one of these men will move to the bottom tier of people thus far. Bray Wyatt versus Matt Hardy. And the bell rings here. They're surrounding each other. Oh, eye rake immediately by Bray Wyatt to Matt Hardy. Try to throw him off the ropes. Hardy able to get to him, though. Bray Wyatt, let's see. Nice takeover by Hardy. See what he's got, bouncing him off the ropes, and nothing going there between the two. Circling each other. And a big elbow by Bray Wyatt, working on the head and neck there. Nothing going there. A lot of circling around, a lot of feeling out process between each other. Very simple shots. Nothing too big right now. And nice test of strength into a drop toe hold is Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt seems to have a... Uh, at least a mild advantage over Matt Hardy here. As he takes him, picks him up. And a big elbow there by Matt Hardy. Throws him off the ropes. Got him into the corner here. Matt Hardy trying to work on him. Elbow into the back. See if he's got eye rake. And now, oh, nice swinging neck breaker by Matt Hardy. Not able to get anything. Oh, throw him in, but nothing. Hardy dragging him away from the corner. See what he's got here. Bray Wyatt missing, but once again with a nice, the nice eye rake. And now these guys change, exchanging big overhead punches between one another. And Matt Hardy's going to go down. Bray Wyatt. No real men, no, no real one man with a distinct advantage thus far. It's been a lot of back and forth action between the two. No one has hit anything too significant. Big headbutt by Bray Wyatt might help, but no. Matt Hardy going to attack the spot that got headbutt. Oh, my. He's going to get another headbutt for his troubles for trying to bite at him. Throwing him off the ropes, but Bray Wyatt now seems to be taking advantage. Nice senton. Hardy throwing him off. Not able to get anything. 
And a DDT by Matt Hardy, and he's going to try to take a breather. Wyatt coming up, though. Once again, throwing him into the corner. Nothing doing. Off the ropes here is Hardy. Nice drop there by Hardy. Wyatt coming in. Nice clubbing blow to the back, and he's going to board the top rope. And a no. Not going to get it. Missing the elbow drop. Hardy's going to come in with the Boston Crab, and it gets broken up. And biting once again is Matt Hardy. He gets the count of two, and he is busted Bray Wyatt open. It's not too often that we see blood stain the mat here in CFC, but Bray Wyatt has now been officially busted open. And Matt Hardy's going to open up that wound even more with his biting tactics. And Bray Wyatt having to deal with his belly-to-belly -belly overhead. Bouncing off into another big boy senton. But Matt Hardy with a big body slam and now an elbow drop of his own. Bouncing him off the ropes here. Another big slam. It looked like a Uranagi almost. And he had a nice, it looked like a figure four leg lock. Getting out of it though. Bray Wyatt, another big, another big suplex. Uh, I can't, didn't see. Oh, got the nice Sanziguri there. Is Matt Hardy right to the back of Bray Wyatt's head. And now he's got the ice pick submission. It locked in, but Bray Wyatt able to come out of it. It's been quite a while since we've seen that ice pick submission. Going for a pin, but he's right up against the ropes here. Not able to get anything. Big gut wrench suplex by Hardy. And Bray Wyatt seems to be feeling it already. A lot, a lot of what he seems to be doing is part of desperation time for Bray Wyatt. As he has been hurt badly. Atomic drop there. See what he's got. Oh! Northern Lights not able to get anything. Now backslide by Hardy. Away from everything at a 2.9, just under the 10 minute mark here. And big twist of fate, that might be enough. But he's not going to go for the cover just yet. He's going to go for the kill here. And oh, that may have cost him as he hit the 10 minute mark. Sister Abigail hit by Bray Wyatt, but he's too close to the ropes. And Matt Hardy coming back at him, dropping the elbow. Bray Wyatt with a desperation. Sister Abigail out of nowhere. And there you go with a big headbutt. Bray Wyatt dragging him away. Going for the pin here. Will that be enough? And it is a three count. Bray Wyatt shows you the, <laughs> the knee drop into the pinfall was enough for Bray Wyatt to win. But I got to say, most of the damage was probably done to that Sister Abigail. I have not seen a whole lot of people actually kick out of a Sister Abigail. Unless your name is Tomohiro Ishii. That's about the only person I can think of. But uh, Bray Wyatt ended up getting a win over Matt Hardy in impressive fashion. Bray Wyatt needing a win here and continues his winning ways. Is now on a two-win streak, I believe. Let me see here. Bray Wyatt, yes, on a two-win streak here. And a uh, solid win over Matt Hardy. We move on. We are now halfway through the night here for CFC, and we move on to our next, our next big match. And this is, this is indeed a big match between these two. We will have Candice LeRae. One second here, Candice LeRae going one on one with none other. Then Kenny Omega. Both of them looking absolutely ready to take this on. Shane McMahon, the referee for this contest. As we'll come over here and we will look at the quick tail of the tape for Candice LeRae and Kenny Omega. Both of them fighting out of Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. So a couple of Canadians fighting one another here. Very similar in age as well. Kenny Omega has him by just a, has Candice by just a couple of years. However, of course, Candice only five two. Um, Kenny Omega a good ten inches bigger than her, as well as nearly twice her weight. Kenny Omega looking to avenge his loss from last week, setting at two and one tied for fourth. Candice LeRae looking to continue her ways with a win last week, or perhaps I think so. Oh. No, actually, she beat Sasha. That's what it was. She lost to Luke Harper last week. I apologize. So we will have Candice LeRae and Kenny Omega, the battle of two Canadians, two Winnipeg, two people from Winnipeg. I believe this is the only, 
I believe that these are the only two competitors in the entire CFC that could realistically be from the same place. I mean, there's Japan people, but I don't think there's anyone from from both from the same town like this. So uh, definitely interesting between the two here. Candice LeRae and Kenny Omega. We'll see who can come back from their devastating losses. And here we go. Candice LeRae immediately with a nice arm drag. Kenny Omega coming back with a drop toe hold, though. Reversed by Kenny Omega. Big back chop to Candice LeRae, and she's going to do... Oh, oh, let's see that. Nope. Not able to get anything here. Snapmare by Kenny Omega. Right now, kind of slow going. They seem to be feeling each other out. Wow, big front slam by Candice. Not able to hit anything. Another not able to hit anything. They seem to be trying to pull off some big moves right off the start and not able to get anything here. You can see the clear difference between Candice LeRae and Kenny Omega in size. Candice was able to easily hop over her, not able to get anything. Kenny Omega, oh, slamming Candice LeRae clean out of the ring. But she's going to come back in at a one. Calls for the DDT, able to get it to Kenny Omega. Omega going to whip her off the ropes here with the go behind. Oh, RKO out of nowhere. And she went for it again and wasn't able to get it. Candice LeRae. Coming in with what she can. Gut wrench, sit down, power bomb, getting a one count. And we're not even three minutes into this contest. And they are pulling out the big guns. And there's a nice choke by Candice LeRae to Kenny Omega. Not able to get anything. And now she's got a headlock. Elbow to the back of the neck here. Let's see what she's got. Nope. Missing the kick here. Kenny. Finley roll. And a base stiff kick to the face of Candice. Candice coming back in, though. Dragging Kenny away from the ropes. Let's see what she's got here. Nice front suplex. Now she's, oh, kick him right between the legs. Perhaps setting him up for a ball suplex. Big drop kick to the back of the head for Kenny Omega. Once again going for a cutter. Not able to get anything. Oh, now she's got it with a big cutter to Kenny Omega. Omega seems to be missing a lot of his strikes, but he's got a nice fisherman suplex. Or, uh... I forget what that's actually called. Oh, wait a minute. One-winged Angel under five minutes in. And that is it at the 4.59 mark. Oh, my God. That is unbelievable. I cannot believe what I had just seen. Candice LeRae doing a number on Kenny Omega. And not even Kazuchika Okada has kicked out of the one-winged angel in perhaps the fastest win. And right now, the only knockout win to have happened in CFC. Kenny Omega with a one-winged angel. 459 into the match. I don't care if that says a 59%. Nothing can beat what the hell just happened there. Oh my god. Kenny Omega... Showing his dominance in that match. <laughs> Pulling out a one-winged angel out of nowhere. And able to knock her clean out. Big win for Kenny Omega. Jesus. Candace versus Kenny is a dream match for Candace Liz. That's, I wouldn't doubt that, honestly. Oh, my lord. That was a thing that just happened. Holy crap. I was wondering if knockouts were actually going to be a thing. But my god. I didn't expect him to hit a one-winged angel that <laughs> that quickly. And then knock her clean out with that. Oh my god. Oh, so we get to our next match. We should... Man, we still have three... Oh... Man, if that was the main... that That's not even the main event tonight. Holy cow, that wasn't even the main event. And here we go. Oh, man. Shane McMahon definitely had a little bit of... Uh, oh, Shane McMahon got to stay out of there. He didn't, he didn't get to spend that long refereeing. <laughs> like it never happened to PWG. Oh, that's... Yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah, she was teamed with Joan Ryan against the Bucks. But, yeah, I could see that being a thing. But there you go. We move on to our next match. <laughs> we still got three matches left after that. Holy cow. Uh, so we move on to Xavier Woods versus Sasha Banks. We'll move into the tail of the tape between the two. As you can see here, 
Uh, Xavier Woods has her by about five years. Five years, her elder. He's only taller than her by about four inches, which is really quite interesting to note. Xavier Woods, not a very tall guy, although because he is a man, he is outweighing her 205 to 114, not quite doubling her weight. But the most impressive feat to remember here is that you have a one and two Sasha Banks looking to get something and a currently undefeated Xavier Rhodes. We're getting into the undefeated territory now to see if these men can remain that way. And Xavier Woods right now tied for first. We'll see what he can get done here as he has to face Sasha Banks. I believe uh, it is, who is it? Him, Ishii, and Tozawa. So the next three matches are featuring undefeated guys. Let's see who continues to walk out of this undefeated, if any of them will. Uh, so here we go. Xavier Woods versus Sasha Banks. And here we go. Oh, big, big right hand by Xavier Woods to start this off against Sasha. A little bit of a test of strength. Nothing going here. I don't know what that says about Xavier Woods, though. But uh, I don't think he should take Sasha Banks too lightly. Oh, man. Big elbow to her. Oh, big body slam by Sasha Banks to Xavier Woods. Now a nice overhead punch. Sasha is going to fight. She is here to fight, and we're going to see if she's able to get it done. Oh, rapid fire punch is big. Huge combo strike. Flipping senton. I don't think I've seen any, him do a flipping senton yet. Everyone does normal sentons. He, he decides to put a little bit of extra flair on it. Sasha Banks having none of that, though, with a drop kick right to the back of his head, sitting another big strike combination is Xavier Woods. He's going to go for a pin. Gets a one count, only two minutes in. Let's see what she's got here. Oh, and she's going to do a flipping senton. Giving him a little taste of his own medicine here. And here we go, an overhead strike battle between the two. We've seen a lot of similar strikes between two people thus far this week. It's been really nice to see that. Uh, there are a lot of different strikes to do in a strike battle. It's interesting to see how many similar ones we've had thus far in our matches. Nice enziguri there. Trapped the leg, but able to get a nice kickoff. But, oh, coming back with rapid-fire strikes of their own with those... Uh, oh, here we go. <laughs> More palm strikes right to... Making use of her hands here. If it's not knife-edge chops, it's palm strikes. Now working on the neck of Xavier Woods. I don't know how well that's worked out for people thus far. But uh, Xavier Woods here looking for, I believe that's I believe that's a surfboard stretch, I believe. <laughs> I know it's something, I forget now. <laughs> oh, kicked him. Looked like right between the right between the legs. And now whipping him off the ropes. Let's see what she's got. Ooh, nice. Knife edge chopped by Sasha Banks. Thought better of her uh, of her decision to jump. Might have actually helped her out a little bit there as Xavier takes advantage is now with the mounted punches, but Sasha able to come back out of it. Here we go. Code red by Xavier Woods as he goes for the pin. Oh, this just looks odd. That just... I don't know why... I don't think the avatars... Are, I don't think the sprites are supposed to smile that much, and I feel like he did when he had a nose full of Sasha's backside. This is really just not... And nice crossface, I believe... I believe looking for the bank statement. Oh, flipping senton by Xavier Woods. And now a drop toe hold by Sasha Banks, stopping him into the lower back twice there. Whipping him off the ropes as she comes off at a nice clothesline by Sasha Banks. Now coming off. Ooh, looking for some sort of sliding drop kick, and it looks like he got out of the way. And another set of combo strikes. Drag away for the ropes now. More seated punches. And she's able to fight back out of that there. And here we go, Sasha working on his neck here. Let's see, not able to get it done here. Let's see what she's got here. Oh, nice, Frankensteiner. And a two count there for the pin. Not able to make it happen, though. Xavier Woods coming off the ropes. Got her over his knee. Nice cradle, but a little too close to the ropes is Xavier Woods. Oh, maybe looking for another Frankensteiner. It reversed into a pinfall. Only got the two count. Xavier Woods coming off the rope. Sasha is tired. Got another back. Another knife edge chop, but she is just breathing heavy to make this work. Bouncing off the ropes. Not able to get anything. Not able to get the Frankensteiner again into a power bomb and a 2.9 that nearly cost her. Going to the well one more time. Nearly cost her again. 
more knife edge chops and will that be enough I don't think that'd be enough. I mean, there's a reason Xavier Woods is currently 3-0. and We are 10 minutes in, and now she's working on, I believe, the bank statement now. <laughs> but he's able to get to the ropes here. And we got another strike battle between the two. Big overhead punches between Woods and Sasha. Uh-oh, seems to be up. Nice drop kick. Oh, Woods able to come back up with a clothesline. That fighting spirit from both of them. That time she got it. And got the pin and a solid two count by Xavier Woods. Throwing him off, not able to get anything. Nice overhead punch by Sasha Banks. And a nice code red, but it seems to be right up against the ropes. Not able to get anything is Xavier Woods. And another Frankensteiner pin. Let's see if she's able to do it. And that's a solid two count there. I don't think she's going to have enough in her to do it. Nice big boot. Wow, she really reached up there to get him for that one. And oh, big splash miss. That might have been able to do it, but that's what but that's why they call it a high risk move. And now Xavier Woods taking advantage of it. This might have been enough to get him what he needs. A spitting kick to her back. Oh, nice overhead punch. Sasha still fighting for her life here. She is very tired. Nice back body drop. She's gonna board the top rope again. Another big splash. And will that be enough? Two and no. Nothing going there on Sasha. Xavier Woods seems to be a little bit tired as well, but Sasha has been breathing heavy for the last several minutes. I think she's just about done here. Whip him into the ropes. Let's see. Board the top rope. Let's see what she's got in mind here. Big Frankensteiner that time off the top rope. Coming off the ropes here. Big clothesline. Picking him up. She seems to be picking up the pace here. Perhaps a second win for Sasha Banks. And oh, Xavier Woods stopping all that momentum. May he straw cradle. Two and no. Two count to Sasha Banks, and it looks like she's going for it again. I don't know if she's going to make him tap out, though. Is he able to get to the ropes here? Leg whip by Xavier Woods seems to stop that momentum that Sasha had gathering. Now working on the leg here. Sasha's get, trying to move to the ropes, able to get out of it, though. And one solid punch taking her down. Xavier Woods now. Spinning kick to the back. He seems to be preparing for something. Oh, my God. <laughs> Looks like a spinning backhand. And Sasha Banks is having none of it with those overhead chops. Jesus. Throwing her off the ropes. Xavier Woods come behind into a roll. Sasha Banks able to get a roll up. No. I thought Sasha Banks able to get maybe one last desperate victory roll on him. Not able to make it happen, though. Xavier Woods once again throwing her off the ropes. Xavier Woods off the ropes. Over with the knee. Let's see what she's got in mind. Frog splash to Xavier Woods. Not able to take advantage, though. Chopping him down with the edge of her hand. And seems to be pointing towards her receding hairline as she doesn't seem to do anything about it. And now it's another overhead strike battle between the two. We have reached 18 minutes. Xavier, oh, huge clothesline. Sasha, drop kick. Able to get the advantage. Sasha Banks coming back with a third win with her fighting spirit. Stomping in on him. Flipping senton. Trying to stop the momentum here is Xavier Woods. But a nice Russian leg sweep, and they are both down. They both get up at the same time. Both of them feeling the effects of this match. Oh, <laughs> that might have done it, though. The nice super kick into that one. Oh, kicking it right into the side. And then the Mahistral Cradle this time. That might be enough. No. Two count on Sasha. She is still fighting. Hurricane Rana. There's two and a three count. Xavier perhaps enjoying that movement just a little too much. As Sasha Banks able to finally get the uh, 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 Xavier's first loss. On the season, he will drop to 3-1, and one, and Sasha Banks proving herself worthy. A fantastic matchup between the two. It's a very back-and-forth match. I wasn't sure what was going to happen, but there you go. Xavier Woods finally dropping out of the, the first one to drop out of the undefeated pool here. There are two men left to do it. And we'll see if that happens as we have two more matches thus far. And, of course, we have Matt Riddle 
and he will be taking on the currently undefeated Akira Tozawa. Let's give him, let's give him those. Let's see the referee for this contest, Mario Yamazaki, coming out here. As uh, we will get a quick look at the tail of the tape between Riddle and Tozawa. Let's take a look at that here as we see, of course, very even in a lot of things here. Uh, Riddle, though, outweighing Akira Tozawa by about 40 pounds there, as well as uh, several inches taller than him. But you can't, there, there is a reason why Akira Tozawa is 3-0. You can't count him out. You can't just simply look at the strength and the size difference and assume that that is going to be a huge, huge factor. Of course, you just saw the Sasha Banks Xavier Woods one. That definitely had a big factor. Uh, de definitely proved that it's not going to be a huge factor. Uh, but however, as you can see here, Matt Riddle only 1-2 and two as he's facing the 3-0 and oh Akira Tozawa. Of course, Sasha Banks was also 1-2. and two, So it'll be interesting to see if another 1-2 and two can knock off an undefeated person here as we'll have Matt Riddle and Akira Tozawa in our sub main event here bell rings and immediately a nice snapmare by Akira Tozawa lock it up here in another one Tozawa trying to out wrestle Riddle I don't know how well this is going to work for him though two big knee strikes and with the mounted punches coming in here Let's see here. Tozawa, but a big body slam, and Riddle goes outside. Coming in at the count of two, though. Hey, Big Balls, how's it going? Oh, Frankensteiner learning from what Sasha Banks did earlier against Xavier Woods. Tozawa looking to try to win that way as well. And nice DDT by Riddle. And these two exchanging blows here. There's a nice, another nice DDT by Riddle. Seem to be spending the first couple of minutes kind of throwing uh, Kira Tozawa thus far, I think, throwing a lot bigger moves out. Uh, Riddle with a couple of nice uh, knee strikes and some DDTs, but it's mostly been a nice little feeling out process thus far. The first couple of minutes, nice senton by Akira Tozawa. And uh, I think they're going to pull out the big guns here pretty soon. Nice jumping vertical suplex by Tozawa, and he's now going to be working on the leg. That might be one of the smartest things I've seen. And a flurry of punches into an arm bar, but Akira Tozawa able to get to the ropes here. And now a back chop battle. Knife edge chop between the two. It is amazing to know that these guys have just been going blow for blow with a lot of different uh, strikes here. Coming off the ropes, not able to get anything on Riddle. Riddle with yet another DDT. His third DDT of the match as he looks for a pin. Not able to get anything, though. Riddle once again taking away that and nice oh missed the knee drop is Matt Riddle and he gets his head stomped on a couple times for it nice knife edge chops there half Boston Crab but he's right up against the ropes immediately that was going to be it stopped immediately a fourth DDT by Matt Riddle and this time oh UFC ground slam there he had him in his guard he slammed him there nice headbutt picks Tozawa back up go behind double axe handle the back of Akira Tozawa's head Tozawa with a nice kick combo here. Another half Boston Crab looking to try to take away perhaps the leg strength. One of the main things that makes Matt Riddle who he is and as deadly as he is is his kicks. Go it for a tombstone reverse. Tozawa with a tombstone of his own there. Once again, working on the legs. This is very smart by Akira Tozawa. I haven't seen a whole lot of people try to take away some of Matt Riddle's biggest assets in his legs. And uh, Tozawa has been focusing heavily on that with a big body slam to the outside. Follows him immediately. And another kick combo. And Yamasaki counts extremely fast as he's going to get in at the count of 13. Headbutt there by Riddle. Oh, he got the leg once again. And he still can't get to it. He just barely gets the ropes in time. Tozawa doing really well here with the head scissors. Dragging him away from the ropes. Let's see what he's got here. Up and a huge senton from the top. And where he should be pretty close here. Bro to sleep. Wow. Tozawa hitting the senton from the top and then a bro to sleep. Couple of finishers from both these guys. They look to finish each other off extremely quickly, it seems. Another big kick combo. Hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Seems to have worked with him so far. 
Nice German, too, and a 2.9 on the bridging German as he seems to have Matt Riddle in trouble. And there it is, package German. One, two, and a three count in an under 10-minute sprint between the two. Akira Tozawa with a win over Matt Riddle. Huge package German by Akira Tozawa, and he will be the first one. Could he be the only one tonight? To leave here undefeated, he's going to go up to 4-0 and on Riddle. Riddle is going to go down to 1-3, and surprisingly enough. Very interesting to see how this has worked out thus far. My goodness. Akira Tozawa with a big win over Matt Riddle. These two went at each other as hard and fast as possible. This was an absolute sprint. And uh, it did as well, though. As we'll have a new referee out here, Fairbear, once again coming out. We saw him just earlier in his first official refereeing gig, and we get to see him here once again uh, in tonight's main event. And you know what? Having Fairbear out there only, only is the most appropriate thing as tonight's main event, a battle of big boys. I cannot wait to see the absolute carnage that is about to follow this contest as we will have Tomohiro Ishii facing none other than Samoa Joe oh my gosh I am personally very excited to see what happens between the two let's get a tail of the tape leading up into tonight's main event of course Tomohiro Ishii has been proven to be nearly unkillable as he is 3-0. and oh. Yeah, as far as dream matches go, this is definitely one. Ishii 3-0 and oh to Joe's 1-2. and two. Both of them are older. Ishii has him by three years. Joe, of course, quite a bit taller than Ishii. He is uh, Ishii, although very short. He is very stout, 220 pounds for, on a 5'7 frame. However, Joe is also ex uh, extremely big as well, 279 on a 6'2 frame. And uh, a Brain Buster, an Ishii Driller against the Muscle Buster and the Coquina Clutch. We'll see if Samoa Joe is the one who has what it takes to take down Tomohiro Ishii. This is a man who took four finishers and still walked away with the win. Is Tomohiro Ishii unkillable? We will find out. I think if there's going to be anyone around... Who could potentially do it? I would say perhaps Samoa Joe, but we will find out right now. What a main event we have set here. The bell rings. Oh, big knee strikes by Samoa Joe immediately. Ishii coming back to fight. Oh, nice clubbing blow there. Ishii coming back in here to reverse. Knife edge chop coming in with a shoulder butt. And look at it. These two also coming in for a sprint, it looks like. Body slam Ishii to the outside as he rolls back in at a one. It's going to take a lot more than that. Oh, two more big knee strikes. He's going to go for a pin this early. Kicked out before the ref could even get there. Test of strength battle, and Ishii actually gets the better of Samoa Joe on that one. Now comes up. Stalling vertical suplex, showcasing the absolute power that Ishii has. Oh, looking for perhaps a power bomb gets gets reversed clean out of the ring and gets thrown back in at the count of three. Nice striking combo by Joe. Joe seems to be controlling a bit of this STF on Ishii, but he's able to get back out of it. Oh, another nice striking combo. You know, just like in boxing, that's that's what you need to make sure you can at least land. Is you need to start landing some jabs. You need to start making them stay on the defensive. Joe able to reverse into that. And here we go. A knife edge chop battle between the two. Ishii getting the better of him. Gets over into the full mount with some overhead punches. Gets fought away by Joe. Joe's going to get him into a Boston Crab. Ishii able to fight out of it, though. Another knife edge chop. Oh, work. punches. Mounted punches to the back of Joe's head. Joe's going to come back with a body slam. And now he's going to start... Working here in a rear chin lock on him. Not able to get anything. And three big elbows by Joe. Working him once again into a Boston Crab. Not able to get anything. Missing a lot of strikes as the two. A nice back suplex. 
Look at that. We're now five minutes in. Oh, two, three, four. The fourth one times the charm to take Joe down this time. Looking to go for a pin here. Only gets a one count on Samoa Joe. Missing another strike once again. I'd say these guys have, have missed several strikes on each other. Nice kick to the back there. Three straight elbows to Ishii. Diving senton. Running senton there by Samoa Joe. Ishii maybe looking for a suplex, but gets suplexed of his own right onto the apron, clean out of the ring. And it looks like he's going to take just a second to gain his regain his bearings a little bit. And another stalling suplex on Samoa Joe, once again showcasing that power. That is Tomohiro Ishii. Reversing, reversing Joe here. Let's see what he's got. Joe with a big knee strike, though. And another one this time. Sending him out of the ring. And Joe, Joe feeling the effects. And he's going to bring in a chair to try to try this couple of failed swings. And Ishii's going to come in with a kick. And, oh, wait a minute. Muscle Buster. Samoa Joe coming in with a muscle buster of his own. He's going for the pin, but he's right up against the ropes. And, oh, bridging German once again up to the ropes. Joe has been throwing bomb after bomb. Just too close. And now a, a huge power bomb to Samoa Joe. He's going to do it again. This time he's away from the ropes. A two count on Samoa Joe. The strength and power of Ishii. Joe throwing palms. Huge Uranage over the chair. Laying in some knee strikes. Ishii coming back with a kick. Ishii coming in with another kick. Grabbed him. Trying to get it 10 minutes in. Oh, another bridging German. Too close to the ropes is Joe. Joe's got to figure it out. Oh, big time Uranage. One of these moves might be the thing that takes out Ishii, but he's got to keep him away from the ropes here. Oh, no. Ishii getting, getting above him, though. Getting up quicker. Missing a huge kick. Can Joe counter from that? No. Is Ishii's going to come out faster with a big back suplex. Pull him away from the ropes. And another kick to the back. Ishii looking for a tombstone pile driver. But he's not going to go for a pin there. Joe whipping him off the ropes. Big kick. Nice boot after by Samoa Joe. See if he's got it. Oh, Death Valley driver. That might have been out of desperation as he is tired. Bounce him off the ropes. Nothing doing there, though. Bounce him that time. Still nothing. Picking him up here. Oh, jackknife powerbomb, and Joe looks ready. Boston Crab, but he's right up against the ropes again. The ring awareness. Oh, my God. Oh, the German. Oh, the powerbomb. Too close. The absolute core strength of Tobohiro Ishii to do this to a 279-pound man as they now have a chop battle. Ishii with a discus clothesline. Joe with a clothesline of his own. Ishii coming back with yet another tombstone. Seems to be preparing for something but trying to get the win back. Coming up, no. Two, three, four, five big kicks. This time he's got him in closer to the closer to the middle of the ring here. Ishii able to get out of it though. And now another <laughs> another big time tombstone. Let's see if he's got anything for him here. Get him up, no. Kick to the back. Missed the big kick. Can Joe capitalize on it? Throws him off the ropes. Comes back. Spinning heel kick by Samoa Joe. Picks up Ishii. Another spinning heel kick. He might be coming in for the kill here. Let's see what he's got. Yes, here he comes. Muscle Buster by Samoa Joe. He's in the middle of the ring. Is this going to be it? 2.9. He kicks out of a Muscle Buster. Huge clothesline. And... Oh, the fighting spirit. Bridging German by Joe. And he gets the three count. Samoa Joe is the man to take down Tomohiro Ishii. He kicked out of not one, but two muscle busters. But that German suplex was just enough to take him out. And Samoa Joe getting a strong win. Over Tomohiro Ishii, and we have another. 
We have another undefeated person done. Three and one now is Tomohiro Ishii. Samoa Joe moving up to two and two. Fantastic match, throwing bombs at each other here. Uh, I'd say that these guys did extremely well as far as uh, match goes, but I think match of the night, for everything that it was between uh, Riddle and Banks, and, and uh, Riddle and Tozawa, and Woods and Banks, and Ishii and Samoa Joe throwing bombs, nothing I think is going to quite top the under five minute desperation hail mary heave that kenny omega pulled off tonight and i think that more than anything deserves to have match of the night and akira tozawa with his win tonight makes him now officially the only member of cfc to be completely undefeated so congratulations to him on that and uh, everyone else is either 3-1, and 2-2, one, two and two, or 1-3 and three, as Flamita in the opening contest of the night able to get his own, um, his own starting win there, his own win. And there you have it for CFC. My goodness. What a, what a fantastic ending with Ishii and Joe. That's exactly what I wanted out of it was just two dudes throwing absolute bombs at one another. So, uh, turned out fantastically, I think. Um, so thank you guys. Uh, once again, I will have something else for you guys on stream, but those of you who watch this on YouTube, but thank you so much for continuing to watch. Oh, I should probably at least give a slight preview of the matches that we will have next week. So week five, the next time I do this, it'll be week five. We will have Kenny Omega and Matt Riddle. Candice LeRae, Jervis Cottonbelly, Akira Tozawa, Pete Dunne, Luke Harper, Xavier Woods, Takashi Yoshida, Bray Wyatt, Sasha Banks, Tomohiro Ishii, Matt Hardy, Shingo Takaki, and Samoa Joe and Flamita. Well, it'll definitely be something to, to behold to watch Banks and, and Ishii fight, and I think uh, Dunne versus Tozawa is definitely going to be interesting too. Uh, it'll also be interesting to see what happens between Omega and Riddle, as well as Candice LeRae and Jervis Cottonbelly. So some interesting matchups for week number five, but there it is. Four weeks officially in the books there for the new Cyclone Fight Club. And uh, I'll have something else for you guys on stream, but those of you watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for continuing to watch. We're four weeks in. We have several more weeks to go course it is a 15 week schedule it'll be interesting to see uh who comes out on top and thank you guys and i will see you next time